My dear students, today a topic of immense significance from medicine and microbiology. I would be taking up one of the diseases known by the name as brucellosis. Now, my focus always goes to what is asked in the exams. So first point, what is asked about brucellosis is what are the other names given to the same disease. So we have to know the Malta fever, the Mediterranean fever, or the Underland fever. Four names to the same disease, brucellosis, Malta fever, Mediterranean fever, and Underland fever. Now, going to the microbiological aspects of brucellosis, or the brucella, you have to remember that the brucella has got multiple species and common to them is that they are non-capsulating organisms and they are non-motile in addition to being non-sporic. So three nons. Now after that you have to remember these brucella are basically cocoa bacilli and there is no person-to-person -person transmission of the disease. In addition, you have to remember that Brucella, Brucella militensis and Brucella abortus are basically infecting the cattle and we can get this infection from cattle. So those personnel who are handling cattle in one way or the other, they are at a higher risk of Brucella infection. Now you have to remember that how does the disease present itself? It can present subclinically, it can present clinically or it can present in the form of relapse. Now what are the important symptoms and signs initially? The patient would be having fever or simple myalgias. Myalgias are very characteristic of brucella infection. Easy fatigability, that's what a patient would just present initially. Then on examination, you can, you might be fortunate enough to have hepatomegaly. You can have increased spleen size, splenomegaly. So hepatosplenomegaly is or may be a feature of brucella infection. Then you can have lymphadenopathy as well. In addition to all these things, then if the disease just goes and spreads, you can be having generalized arthritis in addition to the infection going to the lungs causing pneumonias and brain can also be affected in the form of meningeal infection, meningitis. So arthritis, pneumonitis and meningitis can be a part of later disease once the disease advances. Now how do you diagnose this brucella? <coughs> Basically we have got what we call as ELISA. ELISA is a technique which is frequently used for detection of brucella antigen. Then nowadays we have got this PCR, polymerase chain reaction, highly sensitive, highly specific. You can do PCR analysis for brucella. Culture would not be recommended because brucella happens to be hazardous and cultures are not advised. It was prevent previously asked the two tests, the milk ring and the rose banigal test, they are a characteristic of brucella. So you have this disease and now what is the important drug or the combination of drugs which is used in case of brucellosis. It has been lately seen that few drugs are highly effective and beneficial in patients with brucellosis and you can have this drug called as doxycycline. Doxycycline is very effective in the treatment of brucellosis and doxycycline can be combined with rif rifampin and rifampin and doxycycline combination are highly effective in case of brucella. You can just try another antibiotic trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole combination and that in addition to doxycycline or a doxycycline and DMP-SX combination can be 
very effective for treatment. This round, rounds up some of the important points about brucellosis. So you have to remember the causative organisms, you have to remember the microbiological characteristics of brucella and then the features of brucellosis, then the tests used in diagnosis and the treatment modality. This information would be beneficial to you as far as your examinations of meat, PG are concerned or MRCP examinations are concerned and I hope that you would be liking this small class of mine. Thanks a lot.